imbabazi sawe bizanyo maho ndabiha myako kujira ne sakwawe imbabazi sawe bizanyo maho Tule na magambo yawe Ndabi hamyako Kujirandeza kwawe Imbabazi zawe Wizanyo mahu Ndabi hamyako Ndabi hamyako Hallelujah. 
Surabi Hamya Uri Mani Tabesha Gori Gota Gumu Saraba Gosenio Yarani Sara 
Acheza, 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 tangu nipokege wana Yesu. Acheza, acheza. Amashime shikuri Yesu. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Emondo kuri Yesu. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anyone who's happy in this place? That is here. We Yeah. 
Nabato, Nabato. Let's give a round of applause to the Lord. Let's give a big round of applause to the Lord. If they ask you that peace that you have, that joy that you have, why do you have it? You should answer them, it's Jesus who has been good to me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for giving me this opportunity. I've already fallen in love with this place. Wow. I love the praise and worship. I wish I could take this team to Tanzania just to... Yeah. <laughs> but first of all, I want to thank God for giving me this chance to be here. I want to salute the senior pastor of this church. Pastor Aaron. Pastor Aaron. And the first lady of this house. All the pastors and bishops. Our pastors and the bishop. And my fellow Christians. I want to thank God for giving me this opportunity to be here today. David said, One thing I desire of, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I believe you are here because you love the house of God. He continued to say, one day in the house of God is better than a thousand days outside of there. The best place to be in the world is in the house of God. Thank you for being here tonight. Let's give God praise and bless his holy name. I have already been introduced. And I don't want to spend much time introducing myself. I want just to go to the word of God. I want to talk to you today about pass on the faith. Pass on the faith. I'm so grateful for the theme of our uh, conference this time. How we can bring our children to understand what God says to this generation. Let me say that your family is the most precious thing ever existed on the earth. Many times we ask ourselves, what can we give to our family members? What can we give them as in an inheritance? Sometimes we want to give them gifts which can show our love to them. But I want to encourage you tonight. Pass on the faith. Because that is how we pass on God's blessings. Pass on the faith. Because that is how we pass on God's blessings. The best gift you can give to your household. 
is to pass on your faith to help them to put their faith in God. This is the greatest and most lasting blessing we can give to our family people. Every other thing is temporary. But if you give them Jesus, Jesus is permanent. He says himself, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. If you give them Jesus, they have the way. If you give them Jesus, no one will cheat them. If you give them Jesus, they will live forever. Pass on the faith because that is how we pass on God's blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Moses directed the people to trust God to obey him. And he has been doing that constantly as he was leading the children of Israel. And I consider the book of Deuteronomy as his textbook. Which he was using to help them understand what God is saying. Because the book of Exodus and Numbers had a lot of instructions. But when you come to Deuteronomy, it's like he's summarizing and retelling the children of Israel how to live with God. And we ask ourselves, why is he retelling them the stories of God's salvation? There are some few reasons that are put down. Number one, he is retelling them because they are now I mean, Moses is now facing a new generation. That new generation does not know what God did before. So, since he is facing a new generation, he wants them to know what God is saying about their lives. But the second thing is, people need to remember God and keep his ways. You see, for you to remember, you must be told again and again and again and again. But again, the old generation which uh, left with him from Egypt, most of them have perished in the wilderness, but it was remaining with Joshua, Caleb, and some few of them. And now they are at the age in entering the new, the promised land. So he want them to know what is God saying about them. And so my brothers and sisters, God's faith must be passed on. It is important that we pass on our faith. We are called to make disciples of our like us. They resemble us. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, chapter 
And verse 19, we call this the Great Commission, where it says, Go and make disciples and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And he's saying he's calling us to make disciples after us, after us. So that they too will know what God has saying to us so that we may let them know what is God saying to them. This is the best gift we can give to our family people. You may ask yourself this important question. What kind of family do I want to mold? If you consider this question very careful, you will definitely watch your steps, how you do your things. Because whether you like it or not, you produce your own kind. A mango tree will produce mangoes. An orange tree will produce oranges. You will never find oranges in the mango tree. So if you want to have the next generation fearing God, loving God, it begins with us fearing God, loving God. And so Moses emphasized very important issues. We are reading in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Let's read together, Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7. Deuteronomy 6, 7 up to 9. Six. You there? Mm -hmm. 6, 7 to 9. Yes, Karinungu Kujeza Kumurongwa Chenda. The Bible says, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart. And then in verse seven, in verse seven says, impress them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and even when you get up. Yes, Verse 8, tie them as symbols on your hand and beat them on your forehead. Verse 9, write them on the door frame of your house and on your gates. In other words, let them see the word of God everywhere in the house. I remember when I was growing up as a small boy. My mother made sure that we, we know the word of God. We, we could not miss services before we eat. And actually, it was the order of the house. We definitely know when we come from school, you, you take shower, shower, you sleep for some time. We, we wake up and go and play for a little while. And then in the evening, 
Before we eat, we must have a service. We, have, we pray together and read the word. That is when we eat and we go to sleep. And you cannot break the order. So if you, if you don't pray, no food for you. You must attend the service. Then you eat the food. And everybody knew that. So I remember one time. A visitor came to our house. And uh, you know as a pastor's house we always receive visitors. Actually he was a man of God. So he came, he was very tired. And they prepared some water for him to take shower. And he went to sleep. So when it was time for service, he could not come. So the moment we finished our home service, as we were about to eat, my mother asked me, go and wake up the visitors so they may come and eat. But my dad said, he was not in the service. Let him sleep. Because it's the rule of the home, there is no food if you don't come for the service. And actually, he slept to the next morning. There was no food for him. <laughs> if you continue to read verse 20 of the same chapter, Moses says, in the future, when your son asks you, what is the meaning of the stipulations? Then you tell them, we were slaves of Pharaoh. But the, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Verse 22 says, The Lord sent miraculous signs and wonders. And Verse 23 says, He brought us from there and bring us in and give us the land that He promised. Put emphasis on verse 24. The Lord commanded us to obey. So that we might always proper, I mean prosper and be kept alive. So the new generation wasn't just challenged to keep the faith, but also to pass on the faith. Not just, not just to, your, to their children, but also to their children's children. He says in verse 2 of chapter 6, so that your children and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live. My brothers and sisters, our children need to know faith from us. And their children will know faith from them if they received from us. And this is how we teach them to fear the Lord. And it was emphasized in the couple of times if you read the book of Deuteronomy. 
kandi byagiye bisubirwamo inshuro nyinshi niba musomye igitabo cyo gutegeka kwa kabiri there are three p's in english three p's which i want you to remember rero hari p eshatu nshaka ko mwibuka mu rurimi rw'icyongereza i call them three p's of faith azita ngo ni p eshatu zijyanye no kwizera the first p is possess the faith the second one is proclaim the faith. And the third P is practice the faith. We are called to possess the faith. To proclaim the faith. But also to practice the faith. You cannot give what you don't have. You cannot speak what you don't know. You cannot live what you are not. So you must possess for you to proclaim you must live that way practice it yourself I, I read an example somewhere this guy went to a counselor he wanted to stop smoking and he, he found people on the queue waiting to go into the counselor. One after another were entering. And when it, its time came, he went in and he found the counselor smoking. And he himself, he went there to find help to stop smoking. He looked at the counselor and said, I think you need help. You cannot teach what you're not living. Tell your neighbor, you cannot teach what you're not living. If, if we want if you want the next generation to fear God to love God we must fear God we must love God we, must, we, we must show it by our own lives future generation need to know the truth from us Moses said that these are the commands. These are decrees. These are laws. He said, the Lord your God directed us to teach you. But he was living that life. You will see these phrases repeated in number of time in the book of Deuteronomy. And so I want to encourage you tonight. Share your faith journey. Share your faith journey. I remember sitting with my father because I wanted to know from him. I remember sitting with him and he used to tell me, son, we serve a God of miracles. And I asked my dad, we always read miracles in the Bible. But tell me one specific miracle which the Lord has done to you. Reading is one thing. Living is something else. So I wanted to know from him. Yes, I know we serve a miracle working God. But dad, tell me, what are some of the miracles which God did to you specifically? And this is an old man who has been with the Lord for many years. 
kandi uwo yari umugabo ukuze wakoreye imana imyaka myinshi he began to tell me atangira kumbwira there was a time we went to a village twagiye mu mudugudu runaka and we were preaching and we didn't have a place to stay my friend and i we prayed and asked god to save people and remove them from the hands of the enemy. And when those people received their healing and their lives were changed, they gave us places to stay. Again, he tells me, there was a time we, we slept on a tree because we could not find a house to stay. And he tells me one time I was on a tree. And a snake came and he was climbing the tree. And he said, I commanded the snake to die in the name of Jesus Christ. And instantly the snake died. And he said, that's the kind of God we serve. Those miracles, those stories built my faith to believe that God is not God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's also God of Wilson Kimaro. And today I am standing here not because of what I read but because of what my parents told me. And that gave me life. I do the same to my children. You know sometimes we are very quick giving our children things because we have money. I don't do that many occasions in my life. I have a son by the name of Presley. He comes to me and says, Dad, I want a new watch. Maybe because he saw a friend with a new watch at school. Dad, I want a new watch. I have enough money to buy a watch for him. But I tell him, You know, son, I, I don't own everything. But we serve a God who owns everything. Let's kneel down and pray. I kneel down with him. We pray. And then after that, maybe the next day or the day after, we go and buy the watch. But what he knows is this. My father is not the giver of watches. But he serves a God who can provide whenever we need something. Teach them, show them what is supposed to be done. Brothers and sisters, our God is real. Our God is true. If you want your children to know the faith, teach them how to walk in that faith. You see, the Bible says, so that you can be blessed. There is a resulting blessing that comes with the obedience to God's word. If you read this scriptures, go home and read the whole book of Deuteronomy because this is one of the book in your theme. You will, find, you will find in many places it says so that, so that, so that. For example, in chapter 4, verse 40, it says keep his commands which I'm teaching you today. 
so that so that in chapter 5 he says walk on his ways and do his commands so that so that you may live and prosper again in chapter 6 he says obey his words so that so that we might always prosper you will find those words repeated. In the past, I used to think, I, I, I generalized this, this concept of blessings with, 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 with the issue that maybe blessings is just material things. That when you obey God, you will be prosperous, successful, your needs will be provided, you will have a new car, your new house. But if you study the word of God carefully, you will find that God's blessings are more than that. He was referring to the blessings of God's presence. His protection the experience of his goodness, his love. How many of you know that God's presence, God's protection is more important than money? More, more important than, than a new house. But blessings of right relationship with God peace and tranquility listen there are some things you cannot buy with money money cannot give you everything I, I once knew a friend I had a friend and uh, I, I always used to, to tell him to come to Jesus. But this is a successful man. But he thought because of his money, he is always protected. He had a big house with an electric fence. And many dogs and many dogs. But one time, thieves came, they not only entered his house, they entered his bedroom, to his bedroom, and he had his trouser hanged just uh, behind the door. They took the trousers, and the pistol was inside the trousers, and then they left um, the gun. Oh, okay. And then, and then the next day they called him. And he said, we are the ones who did it. They didn't want anything. They just wanted to show him you are not protected. Listen, money is not good enough to protect you. Success is not good enough to protect you. But obedience can bring blessings from God for your house. Obedience is a blessing. Tell your neighbor, obedience is a blessing. I am blessed. Not because I stay in a big house or own a nice car. I am blessed because I'm living in obedience in God's word. I can be 
in a small house but if I obey God there is peace and protection from God blessed be the name of the Lord as you obey God and do his word Blessings come to your life. I want to tell many young people who are in this place tonight. Obey God and follow his word. One young lady went to a, a, a marriage counselor. And uh, she wanted to, to receive an advice. She said, I am looking for a husband. Now the marriage counselor asked her, what kind of a man are you looking for? He said, oh, I want a nice looking guy. Tall. A bit dark. He should be an entertainer. When I want to laugh, he should make me laugh. When I'm crying, he should cry with me. When I want no noise, he shouldn't talk nothing. When time comes, I want to celebrate, he should celebrate with me. He should always be there for me. That's the kind of man I'm looking for. And this marriage counselor looked at her. Said, My dear daughter, I think you are looking for a television. You are not looking for a husband. Listen. God will never give you a finished product. That is against his principle. God will always give you something which will you will work on it. So that it may become what you want. From the beginning. He put Adam in the garden of Eden. And he told him, he told him, cultivate it. Give names to the animals. God will give you something which will put your effort to work on it. Now, if you don't have God in you, it will not come to what you want. But if you have the faith of God in you, it will come out the way you want it. Because listen, no man can change another human being. You'll get to know that next time. <laughs> but I want to encourage you as I finish. Obey God. Keep his commands. That is the way to enjoy his blessings. Pass on the faith because that is how we pass on God. You, you want the next generation to love God? You want the next generation to fear God? Pass on the faith. I want us to pray. And when I was thinking about this, I want us to do this prophetically. I want all those who are 20 years and below that they will come in front here. And I, 
the rest of us who are remaining on the seats will show a sign of giving. And those who are standing here will show a sign of receiving. And as I was praying, God told me there is something, there is a shift in the spirit. God is going to release a shift in the spirit. Some, some of you, you know one man of God by the name of Dr. Miles Monroe. He is going to be with the Lord. He saw this in the revelation. Here in Africa, a very old man who was a runner used to run marathon, yes. He was buried, he was in the grave buried, holding a stick. You know the, those people who run where they, they, they turn the stick to the next runner like that and they turn around. But this man died with his baton, with his stick. And God was telling him that, that this is what is ha happening in Africa many times. We don't pass on to the next generation. But God wants us to be faithful in passing on to the next generation what God has been doing to us. And if we want the next generation to love and fear God, we must begin at early stage and begin to train them and teach them the word of God. I'm so grateful when I see many young people here dancing and, I mean, praising the Lord. And I want to encourage you, please do so continue to do so. It should start from your heart so that you have an impact in your own very life. I want us I want to ask all of us to stand, please. Let's all stand. If you are 20 years and below, from 20 and below, please, if you can come, is it okay? Yes, yes. If you can come, please. Please come. 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 Just stand here. Amen. Let's face our the, the congregation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we love them? Thank you for coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Now, for those of you who are in front here, I want you to extend your hand as if you are receiving something. And for those of us who are over there, I want us to extend our hand as if we are giving them something. Hallelujah. And we want to believe God. The enemy will not give them things. 
But the people of God in the house of God will give them things to do. Ariko abantu b'Imana bari mu rusengero bazabaha ibyo gukora. You remember after Joshua? Muri buka Yeshua. The Bible says came another generation which did not know the things of God. Oh, muri buka nyuma ya Yeshua ngo haje abikindi gihe batigize bamenye uwiteka. Because no one told them. But we want these children in the name of Jesus Christ. They will receive things from us. Because maybe some of them are coming from homes which their parents are not believers. It's not by accident that they are in this church. Let them receive the things of God from us. We are going to pass on the faith. And so I want to ask the rest of us as we show a sign of giving something let's pray that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ there will be a power to release there will be a power to release we are going to release divine healing we are going to release the works of the ministry. We are going to release a life of fearing God. And I want my children who are in front here. I want you to pray in Jesus' name that you are receiving, you are receiving, you are receiving. You are receiving. We declare in the name of Jesus. The world will not teach you. The world will not teach you. But the parents from the house of God will teach you how to walk with God, how to love God. Yes, we want to give them many things. But the most important thing is faith in God. Come on, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are standing in this gathering tonight. We are here for you, O oh God. And we say enough is enough. The enemy has really troubled our children for long, but this is enough, oh God. We pray now in Jesus' mighty name. As we pray for strength in our families, in our homes, the homes of believers, the homes of pastors and deacons and elders and bishops and People of God, we pray in the name of Jesus that what we have received, Lord, we are going to pass it on. We are going to pass it on in Jesus' name, Lord. Father, we pray for this generation, the coming generation of oh God. Lord, let them receive, let them receive, let them receive. Let them receive a, a fearing life. They, they, let them receive a life walking, Lord, in, in your oracles. Let them receive a life of fearing you, oh Lord. Just like the way Moses did to the generation of children of Israel. In the same way, oh God, we, we pray. We pray. We pray for this congregation. We pray for this church, oh God. Lord. As, as the older generation continues to go far ahead, Lord, these ones will not be left behind. They will come after them. They will come after them. They will receive the mantle. Lord, we will find pastors. We will find church elders. We will find deacons. We will find many church leaders from this generation, oh God. The enemy will not take them to his camp, but Lord, we invite them into the camp of believers where they will worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, oh God, we beseech you, oh Redeemer, just like the way you showed it to me. This is how you're going to do it 
in the restoration church Lord that the many 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 young people will come into your house and stand and glorify you Lord and that we receive blessings from their parents from the fathers and mothers in the house of God our Lord they will always walk by faith they will always love you they will always fear you we bless you Lord Jesus we thank you, O oh God. We exalt you forever. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. You can go back. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 And we believe it is done in Jesus' mighty name. Let's clap our hands and believe God that it is done. It is done. It is done. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is done. Hallelujah. Amen. And Father God, I bless this ministry. And I bless the senior leader of this house and his wife. And the leaders who are standing with him, yes. let there be oil from above, which will always cause a movement, not of crushing, but Lord, a movement in love, yes. in unity, in togetherness, yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.